Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Hymnology, a show about psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and everything in between. I'm your host, Sawyer. Are you a songwriter? If you are, do you often write songs alone or do you write them with someone else, otherwise known as co-writing? Well, today my guest, Rachel Wilhelm, is going to share all about the process of co-writing. Why do we need to know about co-writing? Well, Rachel's going to say in our interview that it helps grow the church and it helps grow the song for others. There's only good that can come out of it. But also what it does, it allows the song to grow. And it helps us to humble ourselves as we write songs. Now, if you're someone who is not a songwriter and you're thinking maybe I should just stop listening to this video altogether, I want you to know that co-writing is not just about songwriting. Co-writing is about community. Co-writing is about being creative and working together for the greater good and humbling ourselves for a better purpose. That could be songwriting, yes, but it could also be how you co-write or work together in your workplace or at home with your spouse and your family or whatever context you may find yourself in. There are elements of co-writing, songs, that can be placed throughout the rest of our lives, and I hope you'll stay around to join us for that. Rachel Wilhelm is a singer-songwriter, and she currently lives in Knoxville, Tennessee. Rachel is also the organizer, the founder of what is called United Adoration, which is a ministry out of the Anglican Church that allows and gives opportunity for songwriters to work together to write songs for the church. So I hope you enjoy my interview with Rachel, and I hope you're encouraged to do more co-writing. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Hymnology, and today I have with me my guest, Rachel Wilhelm. Thank you so much for joining me, Rachel. Thanks for having me. So just kind of share about yourself a little bit. Um, we, today our topic is, is co-writing, but before we really get there, I just want to kind of um, get to know you a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, I am based in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, it's a new um, place in the country for me. I've moved around a lot in my life and um, I've landed here and I love it. Um, I am the minister of worship arts and music at uh, Apostles Anglican Church. It's in the ACNA. Um, okay. And I am a singer songwriter and I also work for um, an ACNA ministry. It's a creative arts ministry called a United Adoration. And I am, I'm basically over um, all of the events and uh, retreats that we hold at local churches um, in the U.S. Okay. Yeah, I had heard of United Adoration before. Um, I don't know if maybe I came across it on maybe Instagram or something like that, but it, it's it's popped up and so that's interesting. So so you are in the Anglican Church. The, the yeah, okay, totally. Cool. Very yeah. very enmeshed. <laughs> okay, well cool. Yeah, yeah I don't. I, I think you're my first Anglican, so, so oh, that's good. good. Um, okay. okay, so you mentioned uh, what you do, but now kind of tell us about maybe how long you've been um, how long you've been in into songwriting. Oh. Um, well, I've been writing songs for, I don't know, probably since, probably since I was seven or eight. So, okay. you know, so like, okay. yeah, 30 yeah. something years. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then at what point did you kind of say, okay, so this is something that I really want to um, pursue as, as far as like, okay, well, I'm going to record this and, and start putting it out. Like when did that transition happen? Well, I think I always desired for it to happen. Um, ever since I was little, I desired it. It's funny. Um, I was the generation that grew up listening to Amy Grant and, you yeah. know, um, read all the fine print on all the Christian music records. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so just seeing all those names and, and producers and different people, I just thought, oh, this is what it takes to make these things. I would love yeah. to do that someday. So it was always like this dream of mine to record. Um, but I never really got into really recording, recording until probably in my, in my late twenties, maybe, uh, early thirties. Um, and I started kind of like recording things on garage band for fun. Um, yeah. and yeah, I, I didn't put out my first record until I was, I don't even know, 39. Um, okay. 
I'm 44. So, okay. um, yeah, I, my first full length record, I, I put out an EP before that of, of retuned hymns, um, okay. which okay. kind of fits, you know, the, yeah. the theme that you have. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just, I was, I was late in life with, with all of this stuff. I've been writing yeah. songs forever, but just never got around. I had kids first. <laughs> that, and also, you know, I mean, the, the process of being able to record is, is so much more accessible, you know, yeah. now, you know, you, you, know, yes. you know, back when, I mean, you had to go to a studio and, and that cost money and, you know, now you yeah. can just do it on your, you can do it on your phone. I mean, you know, it's, yeah. it's that much more well, accessible. So, yeah, go ahead. I don't think the access was there either. I, I mean, okay. when I was much younger, I felt, I feel like the access wasn't, um, it just wasn't as available because, you know, in, I think in a regular person's mind, <laughs> they would think, oh, I have to be discovered in order to, you know, it just was super yeah. hard to even do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that kind of goes along with what we're going to talk about in co being, being discovered, you know, yeah. I don't know if you necessarily have to be discovered so, so much as, you know, just if you like writing, right, you know, and, and, sure. and, we'll, and we'll get there. Uh, so you, you mentioned retune hymns. Did, do did you do that with um, Kevin? Any Kevin Twit? Any or is that um, did, did your past cross at any point? No, I mean okay. I, the thing that I should have done when I was younger was just moved to Nashville, but I never did. Um, yeah. And uh, I I, re I regret some of that um, from when I was younger, but um, no, I I didn't. In fact, okay. um, I don't know if you know Wendell Kimbrew, but um, I did a sort of like a little retune hymns project with him um, when I was in DC. Um, okay. So it was, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, do I, listen, I listened to that the other day. I didn't realize that you were on it when I was listening to, uh, to his music and I, and your name popped up on it. And, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to him too in a second. Cause when we get this co-writing. Okay. So that's kind of your background in, um, in songwriting. And so, um, and now just, just for, for everyone, what's, what is your role in, in your church? Kind of what does that look like for you? Yeah. Um, well, my role in my church is leading music predominantly on Sundays. Um, okay. And, uh, but also just as a music minister and worship arts minister, um, I am, my, my, my role, I'm trying to say this in a way that makes sense, um, is sort of like um, getting to know the artists in our community in Knoxville here, okay. um, providing, providing a space for artists to, um, to write music. Like I'm thinking about songwriters, for example, um, yeah. to write music and to collaborate um, um, and creating a platform for that, like my church will have um, like Knoxville songwriters round events or things like that. Okay. Um, so I facilitate events. I also um, I work for UA, like I had said before, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that that's part of my job as well. OK. Um, yep. For okay. my church. Mm -hmm. Do you do you find that you have good do you have a, a good turnout with the being in Knoxville with the um with the songwriter circles and all um I mean it's really hard to tell in a pandemic honestly yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know right. um I think we would have a like a decent turnout if we if we were in a different situation but you know okay. currently that's not yeah yeah no I, I was and that kind of goes along with with the conversation I had with um with Kirk a couple of weeks ago yeah yeah and talking about just building that community you know and, and it, it's, it, so it's hard. tough yeah it's a tough thing to do it's really okay, hard so right. yeah and so so going along with that let's let's talk about co-writing today now now I know this may not be a topic that that everybody can relate to you know it, it's it's sure. a, a certain thing but I do think there is there is weight to just simply learning how to work um creatively with other people whether yeah. you're doing co-writing and you know, so our topic is co-writing. Um, now, the reason why I kind of reached out to you is because because I've noticed that you you either have co-written with, with several uh, others, um, yeah. or um, I've noticed that you have put together co-writes before, like we just talked about. So yeah. let's talk about this first. Um, who have you, in your experience, you, met, you mentioned Wendell earlier. Uh, yeah. so who, who have you worked with before? 
uh, as far as co-writing goes. What does that look what does that look like for you? Yeah. Well, um, wherever I have lived, <laughs> I've lived yeah. in a lot of places. It's I, I always think it's a little bit embarrassing, but then at the same time, I, I don't regret it because I have met a lot of wonderful people and yeah. um a lot of opportunities have come that I, you know, otherwise wouldn't have had. Yeah. Um, especially with co-writing. Um yeah. I when I lived in Minnesota, I co-wrote a lot. And I still do with um, my friend, Devin Pogue, who um, we started a, it's called Roots Worship Collective, but um, okay. it's kind of like creative community building um, as well okay. um, over there in Minneapolis. And so right. um, we would just host these crazy hymn sing events and yep. um, we would just pop up in, in various places in, um, in Minneapolis and the city and just invite a bunch of people and we would sing, <laughs> but yeah. we, um, yeah, we, we co-wrote a lot. We still do. Um, and in fact, I am, I'm working on um, project managing or producing, um, the next Cardiphonia record and okay. which is the liturgy fellowship Cardiphonia, you know, the Bruce Brent Benedict world. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's about collaboration you know, c collaboration okay. between, um, the two, uh, male and female. Um, okay. so, and Devin is on that project with me. Um, All right. so, um, Devin, um, I've worked with, um, I don't know if you're asking for specific people that if I've worked with, um, yeah, just, I mean, just in general, just, just to kind of get yeah. an idea of kind of what your experience looks like with that. Yeah. I've done a lot of like, um, again, like retuned him stuff. Um, uh -huh. a lot of Psalm writing, um, yeah. co-writing, yeah. Um, one of my major things that I did was the album that I, um, put out last year, um, Requiem right. and I collaborated with Kate Blewett who she's, she writes for Porter's Gate. Um, she writes okay. with Paul Zock a lot. Um, she's written with a lot of different, um, people and, uh, friends, uh, songwriter friends. Um, she's an amazing poet. Uh, she's okay. a Catholic, which is super cool. Um, she just knows her scripture really well and she writes, yeah. Um, she, she writes a poem based on, I think the gospel reading or one of the readings in the lectionary, um, okay. every week, oh, wow. um, okay. which is really cool. Um, yeah. and so she's, she's really gotten to know, um, her scriptures that way by, um, writing, um, based on that. But, um, yeah, yeah when, uh, when, when I, sat down and wrote Requiem during, um, 2020, uh, yeah. she and I worked together really closely on that. She, okay. she and I could wrote maybe six of the songs, okay. um, yeah. on that record. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Wendell, I've worked with Wendell. I've worked with Ryan Flanagan, um, from liturgical folk. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And, um, so with all those, with all those people, um, and, and, out of out of that how many times have you found yourself writing solo about maybe kind um, of what what's the what's the breakdown of, of how much you co-write as opposed to how much you write along oh well that's that's interesting that's a very interesting question um i'm i'm a huge co-writer so okay. i people send me stuff and say, Hey, can you write a bridge for me? Okay. <laughs> Which I am. I don't like bridges in general, but I find yeah, that I'm yeah. always plagued with writing the bridge. Um, yeah. Nobody wants to write a bridge. <laughs> it's not, I get there. I'm like, I'm like, I think I'm just going to keep this as a hymn. I don't, I don't, this doesn't need to be. a bridge. Yeah. So. Yeah. But sometimes you just need the shift out of the same, same, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. And, and so I'm like, I can shift us out of there and then we can get, yeah. I can get us back to it again. Yeah. Um, so I think that's something that I'm, <laughs> I'm good at doing, which yeah. is so funny because that's the first thing I cut in a worship like set yeah. good, oh, you <laughs> get the bridge out yeah getting the bridges out of there we don't need it yeah, yeah. Um, or at least don't but, do it the, the next seven times that it's supposed to be done oh my gosh it's yeah. so funny yeah. um yeah. but yeah I um I do get a uh, request to you know to to co-write um regularly and okay. and I do that um but I and the thing that's interesting about my church and my parish 
is that we have a psalm that is um, either that we read or we um, engage with on Sundays um, okay. every week. And so I write a refrain for okay. the psalm and I teach it on the spot every week. Okay. So I am okay. I'm actively like writing alone then, and then I'll, yeah, I'll sit yeah. and I'll write alone when I, when I have to, but I prefer yeah. to collaborate. Yeah. So you're, so you're writing, not, not only co-writing, but also you are, you're writing as part of your role in your church. Oh yeah. 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 You okay. know, I should have, I should have told you that I keep thinking yeah, it's a good. given, but yeah, I, I get no, it's, it's right not now. a given. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so no, that, that is interesting. Um, and I think it could be useful in, in, in more, if, if there were more of that. So, yeah. Okay. Sure. So let me just ask this question. Um, why should we co-write? Usually when we see, you know, like this inspirational story of somebody who's, who's a musician, you know, um, it's, it's like in a movie or something, they're sitting in their bedroom, writing in a notepad, um, you know, with their guitar on their bed, and they've written, they've written this great song that's going to change the world. Um, how, how is that usually not the reality, you know, and then so what, why co-write if, if we could just write alone and, and do our own thing? Well, um, I don't know where Andrew Peterson says this, but he talks about serving the song. Okay. Um, and, and that's something that's really hit me over the last couple of years is how can I serve the song well? Um, like with, uh, when I was writing Requiem, um, a way for me to serve the song well was, you know, Kate Blewett would write lyrics or something. Yeah. And there's yeah. such good lyrics. I want to serve those lyrics um, the best way that I yeah. can. Yeah. So I write, I don't know, three to five different melodies and I choose the one that I like the best. Okay. Um, but serving the song, um, it'll make a better song. Um, collaboration is, yeah, I yeah. nine times out of 10 is going to make a better song. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know how that is, but in my experience, it's just it, a different perspective, a different outlook on um, what one writer is writing. Um, always helps the song to be a better song. Right, right. Yeah, and and just to kind of dip out of co-writing or uh, songwriting for a second. I mean, that could be true with, with anything. I mean, any, anything creative or just anything, even in, in work life, usually a second opinion, third opinion. Um, my mm -hmm. wife gets irritated with me sometimes because I ask for too many opinions <laughs> before I actually make a decision, you know? And, and so in and, and that collaboration is definitely helpful. Um, so this is kind of going to, going to go along with, with the process of it. Um, mm -hmm. So hey, let's just talk about the process. How, how does that look? So for, I, I know personally, and before I kind of did any co-writing, it, it, that's an intimidating thing to do, like to, to finally take something you're, that, is, that you're holding on to and then say, okay, I want somebody else to do something to it. So what does your process of co-writing look like? And then maybe kind of share... All right, how, how can I get into get into co-writing? What should that look like for me? Yeah. Um, well, I have a lot of different processes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. You know. Yeah, there's definitely not one way to do it. So just kind of. Yeah. I mean, I've done all kinds of different things. Um, I think I think the biggest hurdle in co-writing um, with any process that you pursue is um dying to self okay um okay. so you have to be able to accept that your song isn't the perfect song yeah. it might need help and someone else can speak into this song yeah. um yeah. now the person that you ask may not be the right person to ask or the right person to collaborate with and that's fine if you get the feeling in your gut like uh I don't like where this is going. It's not yeah, with my yeah. original vision. Great. Go with someone else. But you have to, you have to know songwriters enough to know, um, like, is this person going to, you know, is person A or is person B going to speak well into the song? Is it, are they going to serve the song well? Um, there's, there's a way of uh, collaborating or co-writing where, you know, you have an existing, like, 
song fragment, yeah. right? And then yeah. you're working from that. Um, so say I have a, an existing song fragment and I, and I give it to you and I say, hey, can you write a verse? I've got a chorus. Yeah. Um, then there is where you sit down in a room and you're like, okay, what are we going to write about? You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Psalm yeah. 19, yeah. let's do it, you know? Right. And like, there's this major hurdle of like trying to figure out if this person's comfortable or if, if that person's comfortable or, you know, all of that. Yeah. Um, but, but most of it, when it comes down to it, um, comes down to dying to self and yeah. being able to, to sit back and say, you know what? Okay. Maybe we should go that direction. Maybe I don't know everything. Yeah. Um, and yeah. maybe yeah. I shouldn't spout my opinion every five seconds. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah. co-writing that, goes a, a lot better. better. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're protective. And when you know, we're, we're generally protective of what we write because we, we feel inspired, you know, until we have. Yeah. inspiration it's hard to let it go but um well it's a very say, vulnerable thing it's it's yeah. like if you know <laughs> it's it's like your singing voice you know it's it's a part of yeah. who you are and it's a part of like what comes out and right um and it's and it's just a, a very um like exposing kind of um activity where you've got to be with people that you trust right right yeah and, yeah and so when you get there when you get to that point where you are with those people um what does that scenario look like Let, let's just say um you've got kind of multiple things going on you're going to start a new song but also maybe you have a, a piece of one that you have written um you know just kind of practically what does how does that go how does that process go that's interesting um i usually don't write just from scratch with people um, okay. usually someone has a little something or I have a little something, Okay. um, which is, you know, we'll kind of go, okay, let me look through my, our voice memos and, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. um, and see oh, what no. we've got. Um, I can give you a couple scenario, like an, a scenario with, um, just put out a single, um, called Holy Mystery okay. with, um, with a co-writer, um, Justin Carlson and Karen Simmons um, yeah, and yeah. Ben Bannister. Um, but I regularly write with Justin Carlson and Karen Simmons. And we've had a couple of times where we've met up in Nashville and, um, have co-written together. And right. what, what happens is we kind of like go through like a, a voice memo kind of activity yeah. or, yeah. or Justin yeah. will say, Hey, I've got like this two lines of a chorus. Let's, yeah. let's write on that. And what, what kind of happens is I'm the one standing you know, back and watching yeah. Karen and Justin descend upon the lyrics and okay. the, you know, the chorus that they have. And I have a really hard time while people are working things out, getting like catching the wave of a melody because I'm more of a melodist. Okay. So um, I have to kind of like walk away from it. So I have my own coping mechanisms. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, so several times I've had to like say to them, you guys work that part out. I'm going to go think of a verse really quick. I'm going to go outside. Yeah. Okay. And so I'll go outside and then boom, I get it. And I come yeah. back and I'm like, how about this? Yeah. And they go, yeah. oh my gosh, that's it. Or no, that's not it. I'll go back yeah. out. You know, that right. kind of thing. Um, yeah. And it helps. It, separation helps with, with anything. You've got to take a step back and, and breathe and go back in. Right. And yeah. And that happens to me more than it happens to other people I've seen. I, okay. I don't know why it's my way, but that's, that's just the way I, I do it. Yeah. So. And yeah, you know, and, and I'm kind of more, I'm more like, let's just, let's just knock this thing out. Like, I hate, I hate that. I wish I would take my time, but like, I'm more of a, all right, I've got this idea. I want to get these four verses, you know, in a chorus and be done with it and to move on to the next thing. But I do think it's good to breathe and let it kind of soak for a little bit before you kind of go on with it. So yeah. you're in the room, you've got it, you've got it written. Um, you know, really the next step with the song is either to figure out if you're going to record it or you're going to kind of just let it hang out. So um, what does that look like? Because you've got three, you got, you know, three, two or three people who have, who have worked on this one song, let's say it's done. Um, you know, who gets, who gets to record it? Um, do you all do it together? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I would think situation. you would want it to be fair. Yeah. You, know, you want it to be, you want everybody yeah. to get the credit they deserve. So. Yeah. And that does happen. Um, yeah. 
<clears throat> I can talk about just the recent release we had um, okay. with the song I mentioned, Holy Mystery. Yeah. Um, we wrote that at a, a at a United Adoration Knoxville songwriting retreat. Okay. Um, and I came in at the very end. So it was uh, Justin Carlson, Karen Simmons, and Ben Bannister. Okay. Um, and they they worked hard and got mainly the whole song done. All right. And then I came in. Uh, just checking on them, seeing how they were doing, because that's yeah. part of my role as the um, retreat leader. Yeah. I'm giving people ideas and stuff. They're like, Rachel, come on in here. Um, and I I wrote the bridge. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. my contribution yeah. is the bridge again. Gotcha. Um, so, um, so what happened with that was um, we decided that it was a good enough song that we wanted to record it. Okay. And um, we really liked the way Justin was singing it when he sang okay. it. Um, so we, it kind of naturally fell that way. So when, um, when the uh -huh. song was being written, Justin was just mainly singing the melody of okay. it and everybody was harmonizing. So it kind of like, it kind of got decided that way. It just was an organic, um, you know, situation. Yeah. Uh, so when we decided to record it, we decided, you know, Justin, everybody just, it was like common consensus, like you're just going to lead this. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of us will do these different roles. So Karen ended yeah. up playing piano and Ben and I did background vocals. Um, okay. And then I ended up producing the actual song and making sure that, okay. you know, everything happened yeah. the way it was supposed to happen. Yeah. But um, yeah. Um, and then Justin released it as a single and just added us as, um, as co-writers so okay um which goes it, back to your point of, yeah. of you've got to die to sell before you, you get into this yeah I think the other yeah. thing too is like every co-writer has a different you know vocal range and yeah. and all of that and I think you need to you need to figure out like how does whose voice serves the song the best yeah this yeah. particular yeah. song and right. it is again dying to self right. <laughs> it just it just is so yeah yeah I'm, I'm sure and and so everybody kind of has the roles recorded but let me ask this and, and I, I know I'm getting super super practical you know like no, you know like so co-writing for dummies but um who who records it you know like where do you go from there because you know I'm, I'm I'm thinking of more of like in, in my context where um you know maybe you write a song with a guy you met you know and, and you're like okay I, I let's let's do this or maybe it's on zoom or, or you know something like that and um you know how, how do you go about that process um mm -hmm. obviously with you guys you you all kind of know uh, you have some experience with that but um how, how does that work um well I write with my friend Karen Simmons quite a bit she's okay. in that um that loop that I was talking about and um right now she is recording an EP um, it's a series of, it's two more EPs that she's doing and I'm, um, producing it for her. And what's interesting about it is, um, a lot of the songs on there are songs that she and I co-wrote. Okay. Um, okay. and the thing is, is I'm not, I don't feel like a lot of songwriters are especially attached to their songs to where they feel like they have to be the ones to record them. Yeah. I just haven't run into that many that yeah. are like, I must be the one to record yeah. this. Yeah. Um, there are some where like with, with Requiem, I felt like I, I needed to be the one to record it. Right. But right. Um, with my co-writes with Karen, they just felt so like mutually written that mm -hmm. it wouldn't have mattered if I recorded it or if she did. And in essence, we're both recording it because yeah. I'm producing a record. So right. Like it, right. it just makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. But I really feel like songwriters that collaborate regularly mm -hmm. um, for the most part are generous, hospitable people yeah. that, that know, like they know how, how to play the game. I mean, it's just yeah. how it works. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so you talk about building, building like that community that you have in, in Knoxville. So, and then, and then you also, you also mentioned Nashville earlier. So what does this look like or how, what is, what are some, 
some tips or maybe some encouragement you can give to somebody who really wants to get into this, but they're not going to be in Nashville anytime soon, you know, like that, like they are going to be where they, they are and where they're serving. Um, so how, how, how going to, how does a co-write work? Um, and maybe in, in, in that kind of situation where, um, you just want to just do this, um, just for encouragement. Yeah. You know, um, well, I think you have to be, you have to have that mindset first. Yeah. You know, like you have to have your expectations at a manageable level. Yeah. Um, Living near Nashville or living in Nashville does not mean that I'm going to be some recording artist right. singer that's popular. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I don't think that's the best path for most people. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I don't even know if it's the best path uh, uh, path for anybody. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad that I'm where I'm at now, and that God has um, shepherded me to um, be more of a um, an encouragement to other artists rather yeah, yeah. than, um, rather than these other hopes and dreams that I thought that I needed to accomplish. Right. right. Um, I think those things need to die, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. In order for you to be satisfied and content with where God's placed you say yeah, you're yeah. at a church and you do want to record for the edification of your people, mm-hmm. um, and for your community. Um, I think, I think you have to, um, and you know what, I just, I don't want it to sound like it's settling, um, for those that are aspiring songwriters, um, or who are songwriters that, um, are completely capable of being incredibly successful. Um, it's, I, I think it's a lie that you have to be published and you have to have um tons of churches singing your songs or whatever your context is it's it's a complete lie i think if if the people in your pews are singing your songs that's that's everything um and so recording with um people in your community i would say that's everything i i would say try to try to get a, a setup and, um, yeah, and what yeah. I mean by setup is like a DAW and a, you know, yeah. like recording equipment, just, you don't have to go crazy, right. but you know, no, it, and it is affordable right now. You know what I mean? Like, that, it, like, you know, it is possible, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and kind of go along with what you mentioned, Andrew Peterson earlier, I remember reading in, um, in adorning the dark where he talked about this exact thing, like, you know, like, Hey, stay where you are. Like you don't have to move to Nashville, you know, like yeah. it's okay you know, do the yep. most you can where you are, because that's where you're meant to be. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And yeah. And, and I think, and I, when I was talking to, to Kirk, you know, we, I, we, you, you mentioned your expectations, you know, kind of where you want to be. All right. Not, not every song has to be one that changes the world, you know, and, and it's okay if it, if it doesn't go anywhere, you know, it's, it's, it's still meant to serve either you or your community in, in some way. So yeah. Well, that's good. And, you know, I, there is so much more in, in co-writing that can go along because I, I know you've had a lot of experiences with it and, um, and I've seen, and I've seen kind of a lot of different ways that it, it's gone down, but could you just real quick before we kind of end the conversation, could you um, talk about your, your latest album that's come out um, last year? Just, and I know you mentioned it some, but just kind of share your heart behind that album. Yeah. Um, so my friend Kate, um, blew it like I mentioned before the poet um she was she struggles with with anxiety and she's she's publicly talked about that um and she was feeling very anxious just about the pandemic and okay. every yeah. night before she would uh, go to sleep she um she would listen to requiems <laughs> okay. before she would fall asleep to kind of calm herself down um yeah. she was thinking about you know people that had been dying and, and all of that. Um, and just the general anxiety of, uh, the world. Um, and so that was weighing really heavy on her and she had had the thought, you know, Rachel, 
<laughs> if anyone can write a modern requiem, you should write it. You know, you're yeah. so like melancholy and, you know, um, and yeah, your, yeah, first album, so, your first album was called Lament, right? Yeah. Songs. Yeah. Lament. yeah. yeah, I got yeah you. So it, yeah. yeah, it kind of matches, I guess. Um, yeah. So she uh, emailed me and, and said this, and I was like, well, why not? I mean, I'm sitting around and recording yeah. for my church and yeah. we're doing Zoom and, you know, yeah. I've just got, I've got time. I can do these things. Um, so she and I decided, I think it was like right when the, the first, that first lockdown happened, um, okay. like in March, uh, we started working on Requiem. So okay. uh, she just kind of like got the skeletal, um, just the lineup of all the songs that we would need in order to complete a, a requiem. Right. So it's like a funeral mass. Um, the okay. Anglican church doesn't have a funeral mass, which I think is really sad. Um, but um, yeah, she, she did some research. I did some research and then we started writing um, like the perpetual light. <clears throat> um, we started writing um Let's see, uh, like the Pai Jesu, you know, okay. um, in paradise, those yeah. pieces. And so she wrote the lyrics and then I started writing the melodies. Um, yeah, we were both really hit with um, just the, I had friends that had, um, that had died, um, mm -hmm. friends of, um, friends that actually had parents that died or, yeah. you know, relatives that had died. And it just felt really, really heavy. And while we were writing this whole thing, it took us a couple months. Um, yeah. it, it just reaffirmed that we were, we were doing the right thing. Um, one of the reasons why we wrote it was that, um, because families just didn't have um, the access to funerals and stuff like that, yeah. um, to mourn their loved ones, yeah, um, yeah. we thought that we yeah. would bring, and that's you know, the part we um, I think we might forget about every now and then. It's like when we can even go to funerals, you know, and, and right. that, that has an impact on on everyone, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was really tough. And so um we just thought that this was a way to bring a funeral to them. Yeah. Um and help them mourn. And um I had a friend tell me uh who was grieving that the album itself creates an environment for you to grieve. And I, I just had never really, I mean, that was the purpose, but I didn't really know I was actually accomplishing that purpose yeah. um, until someone actually said it to me. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. We raise our hymn to you.
sounds good. And so you can stream that anywhere, right? I know it's on Spotify, oh, yeah. but anywhere you can stream. Okay. Well, good deal. Yeah. And it is called Requiem, correct? Yep. Okay, good deal. Well, make sure you check that out. And I hope you enjoyed our conversation about co-writing. Um, it is a big world to jump into, but it is worth it um, when you kind of get down in there. So Rachel, thank you so much for talking with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, I enjoyed my conversation and my time with Rachel talking about co-writing, and, and I hope you have too. I hope things we can take away is that we need to humble ourselves when we come to a co-write. Um, that is step one. We're, we hold our song so tightly, or we hold our project so tightly, or we hold whatever it is we work, we work on so tightly that we have a hard time giving it up for maybe some criticism, or maybe some tips, or maybe just some encouragement. So humbling ourselves for the sake of ministry and the gospel is always something worth doing. If you would like to learn more about United Adoration and some of the co-writes that Rachel is organizing, you can reach out to her to get more information about that. But also be sure to listen to her album, Requiem. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Himology.